Hey there folks, Mr. D here, and in this video we are going to be continuing our adventure in solving logarithmic equations. This time we're going to start learning about natural logarithms. And natural logarithms uh, are similar to common logs, you know, just to clarify, common logs have an assumed base of 10. And if you look at that button on your calculator, you'll have the common log button, and right above that you'll have 10 to the x. And we're also going to start talking about natural logarithms and, and the uses they have. So on your calculators, right underneath the log button for most of you, you're going to see an LN button, and that is the natural logarithm. And natural logarithms have a base E, and E is the exponential base in mathematics. So it's another one of those letters in which it has a specific value. We've already learned about i, the, ira or the imaginary base unit. So that's the square root of negative one. E is the exponential base. And right above the ln button, you should see e to the x. Right above there is the option as well. So the calculator kind of reminds you, you know, a common log has base 10, a natural log has base e. Well, if we wanted to know what the value of e is, we could just go to our calculator and do e to the first power, but e is an irrational number that continues on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever with no discernible pattern, but it is roughly 2.72. Okay, so the exponential base, and again, we're going to learn more about this in future videos, is roughly 2.72. Now, the value of e is not going to be super important yet today, but we will bring it up later on this unit. So a natural logarithm is a log with a base e. So anytime you have a log with a base e, it is written as natural log. Just like we've talked about before, if you ever see in a play, if you ever see a plain old log and there's no base written, that base is assumed to be a 10. Same thing here. If you ever see ln natural log written, the base is assumed to be base e. You will almost never see, however, that base written out, just as a heads up. One nice thing about natural logarithms, since after all, it is a logarithm, we can use the same properties of logs that we've been using for common logarithms. Namely, we can figure out change of base formulas for logarithms that don't have a base 10. So we've seen change of base formula previously where the base is always on the bottom, but we would do a common log of m divided by a common log of b. Well, we can do the same thing with natural logs and we'd get the same results. Just as a reminder, when you're throwing those in your calculator, please make sure you are using parentheses. So down here, I already have the answers written out, but I do want you to test your ability to get these on the calculator just to make sure that you're, you're typing things in properly with the correct parentheses. Uh, so for the first one, we have log base 2 of 9. The base is 2, so I'm going to put that on the bottom, and I'm going to do this using com or sorry, natural logarithms meaning the base is e. So I'll have natural log 9 over natural log 2. Again, make sure you have parentheses there. So when you punch that in, you should get 3.17, which, you know, makes sense because 2 to the third is 8, so it's got to be a little bit more than 3. We do the same thing here with number 2. Log base 5 of 62, instead of using common log 62 over common log 5, we could do natural logs, and that would look like ln... 62, so natural log of 62, divided by the natural log of 5. Again, base is always on the bottom. Base is always on the bottom. Last one, we'd have natural log 30, use parentheses wisely, divided by natural log of 7. So again, with these, just punch them into your calculator. Make sure you're using the correct keystrokes so that you're getting the correct results. Okay. Now for solving equations that have logarithms involved. One of two things will happen. First, you'll see logarithms on both sides. And if you have logarithms on both sides, assuming they have the same base, then we can make the claim that the arguments must be equal to each other. So if you have a logarithm on each side of the equation, and there's nothing else, there's no constants being added or subtracted, and they have the same base, you can make the claim that the arguments must be equal to each other, and you can solve that resulting equation. As we've done before, make sure you're checking for extraneous solutions. 
because if we plug in our value back into the original equation, we get a negative result as the argument for the logarithm. Well, there, then we're in for a mess uh, or a world of trouble. Basically, that means it's, it's going to be an extraneous solution because we can't have negative arguments. All right. Sometimes we might see a logarithm written only on one side of the equation. So here I've got log base 3 of 4x, and we want to solve for that variable. Well, the way we would do this is if you're stuck in logarithmic form, we're going to transfer to exponential form. And the same is going to hold true if you're ever stuck in exponential form. Rewrite it in logarithmic form, and chances are you'll be able to solve. So if I wrote this in exponential form, I'd have 3 squared equals 4x. Well, I do know what 3 squared is. That's just 9. So 9 equals 4x. Therefore, x is 9 fourths. No calculator needed on that one. Let's see some examples here, shall we? Let's see some examples. We want to solve the following equations. Round your answers to three decimal places when necessary. Uh, for this one, we're going to be able to do number one without a calculator. Number two, you will need a calculator, just as a safe heads up. All right, so number one, log base four of x plus three equals two. There's really nothing I can do here. I'm trapped in logarithmic form. If you're ever stuck in log form, switch yourself over to exponential. So this would be four squared equals x plus three. Four squared is 16. Therefore, x would be 13 if I subtract 3 to the other side. We could plug that in to double check. 13 plus 3 is 16. Log base 4 of 16, yes, that is 2. Over here, we have ln of x minus 3. The natural log of x minus 3 equals negative 2. Well, we're, we're kind of stuck. Can't really do much. So ideally, I, I want to do the same process, right, where I go into exponential form, but the problem is, is I'm not seeing a base there. Fortunately, since this is a natural log, I know the base is e. I know the base is e. So I can write this as e to the negative second power equals my argument of x minus 3. On the calculator here, you need to find that e button. So look right above the ln button, and you'll see the e to the x button. So I hit second and then select that. And your calculator will show something that looks like this. You're going to type in negative 2, close out the parentheses. When you do that, if you do e to the negative second power, you'll get 0.1353 blah, 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 blah. And that equals x minus 3. So that's the only part that we truly needed a calculator for. Well, solving for x isn't going to be too hard. Let's add 3 to the other side. And I get 3.1353, and that will equal x. All right. Let's take a look at two more. And then the following examples, I have the work pre-written, and we'll just kind of talk through them. Number three, I have log on each side. So both sides have logarithm. There's no base written, which leads me to believe it's a common log of base 10. Regardless... I have logs on both sides sharing the same base, so I really don't even care what the base is as long as it matches. What I'm more concerned with is these arguments here, because now I can make the statement that 5x plus 1 is equal to 4x plus 6. So I've taken something that looks scary and transformed it into a little Algebra 1 style problem. So I could solve this for x relatively quickly. I would get x equals 5. And I would just plug those back in just to make sure they match and that I'm not getting any crazy extraneous solutions. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 1 is 26. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 6, also 26. And it's not negative. Awesome. All right, number 4. I have log base 2 of x squared minus 7x equals 3. Well, I'm only seeing log written once. And I'm kind of stuck in logarithmic form. Not a whole lot I can do. So I'm going to wiggle myself into exponential form. So what's that going to look like? Well, I'd have 2 to the third equals x squared minus 7x. Now, I know what 2 to the third power is. That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 
I think I have too many twos. Two times two times two, that would be eight. So eight equals x squared minus seven x. Well, if I have an x squared, chances are I'm gonna want to write this thing in factored form. But in order to do that, I need to have it set equal to zero. So I need to move that eight to the other side. So x squared minus seven x minus eight equals zero. Well, let's factor. Numbers that multiply to be a negative eight but add up to a negative seven in the middle. So they have to multiply to be a negative eight but add up to a negative seven. Well, that would be a negative eight and a positive one. So my two solutions are x equals eight and x equals negative one. Now before I move on, I do need to make sure that neither or neither ugh, of these are extraneous, so let's double check. If I plugged in eight for x, that's a positive eight, even though my penmanship begs to differ. Ew. There we go. If I plugged in eight for x, eight squared is 64. Minus seven times eight. So 64 minus minus 56 is 8. So that turns into log base 2 of 8 equals 3. And you know what? Yep, that checks out. That's a true statement. If I plugged in negative 1 for x, negative 1 squared is a positive 1 minus 7 times negative 1. So positive 1 minus negative 7 minus negative is an 8. So I'm left with the same thing. So that also checks out. This one has two different solutions, 8 and negative 1. All right, let's see these two now. All right, number 5. First thing we're going to want to do is isolate the natural log, which means the 3 has to go. So the 3 gets divided over to the other side. At this point, I'm stuck in, in logarithmic form, so I'm going to go over to exponential form with the base being e because I have a natural logarithm. So I have e to the negative two-thirds equals 6x. When you're throwing this in your calculator, make sure you use parentheses anytime you have funky exponents happening there. So left side straight to the calculator, you're going to get a nasty decimal. Typically if you round to you know, three, four, or five decimal places, you should be safe. Well, let's solve for x now. Let's just divide out the 6 and we'll get our answer. On number six, we are trapped in logarithmic form. There's really nothing I can do. So I'm going to rearrange this into exponential form. So four to the first power equals my argument of 100 over x plus one. Now from here, you can almost treat this as if it were a proportion. And you can cross multiply these things to solve for x. So what we can do is multiply four times that quantity x plus one. Now at this step, you have the option. You could divide four to the other side, or you could distribute the four in. I think I opted with distribution, but it really doesn't matter. You'll get the same result. So four x plus four equals 100. We'll move that four over. We'll divide the resulting number by the coefficient of four, and we get x equals 24. All right, that is it for this video, folks. You know the drill. If you have any questions at any point, please do not hesitate to let me know. And as always, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.